Hey everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's episode, I'm going to show you how to add mobile controls to the third person controller that we have created recently. As you can see, we can move it using the joystick. Also, we're going to add this button to switch to the ball mode. In this mode, we have a different speed. This method works with the new input system. So I highly recommend you to watch this video until the end. And without any further ado, let's dive right into it. So here's what we left off from the previous videos. We have created this basic third person controller. We can sprint using the shift key. In today's episode, we're gonna add mobile controls and it works with the new input system. So you could use this for your projects. First of all, you will need to download this folder that is called mobile controls. You could download it from the link under the description of this video, or you could get it by creating a project under Unity Hub. Make sure to select a third person you will find a mobile controls folder that you could use for your game. For me, I will simply extract this and let's import it into Unity. I'm gonna put it under the assets folder. Then we can go under prefabs, canvas. You have two options. The first one is using joysticks to move the camera and the player. And the second one is using a touch zone. You could drag your finger to move the camera and move the player as well. Let's start using this one. And there you go, we have two joysticks. Also, we're gonna add a third button so that we can switch to the ball mode and get back. In our previous videos, we have created a C-sharp script that handles the player inputs and it is called the player inputs manager. And it is setting these variables that we have created to move the player. Instead of assigning these values that works with the computer, we're gonna read the inputs from the joystick and the script that is responsible for that is attached to this canvas and it is called UI Canvas Controller. Let's open it up. This script is created under a namespace starter assets. I'm gonna get rid of it. We don't need that. Then we need to change this variable. It is the script that handles the input. In our case, it is called Player Inputs Manager. Let's change the name. I'm gonna copy it and use it under here so that we can access these variables to move our character from the mobile controls and I'm gonna call it inputs. Then we have few functions like the virtual move input and it is called automatically each time we use this joystick. In such case, we're gonna use this vector to move our character. For that, we need to access the move vector using inputs dot move equals the virtual move direction that changes when we use the joystick. The same thing applies for the camera movement. I'm gonna use inputs dot and the vector is called look equals the virtual look direction. Then we have this virtual jump input that is called each time we press the jump button. In such case, we will access the jump boolean under the player manager input script using dot jump equals this virtual jump state boolean. And finally, the sprinting. For now, I'm gonna stick with these functions to control our character. Make sure to save the script. Then we have to select the canvas and reference the player inputs manager, which we have attached to the player holder. And it is called the player inputs manager. You could simply drag the player holder. Next, I'm going to change the project platform by going to file, build settings. Instead of using Windows, Mac and Linux, let's select Android. If you haven't this option, make sure to install it. And let's click on the switch platform button. Then let's close this window. At this point, we can't use these buttons because we need to add another component and it is called the event system. It is under the mobile controls folder. Let's drag it. And there you go, it is working. For now, I can't use the sprint feature because I have one mouse cursor, but I'm gonna hit control so that we can switch to the ball mode and test the jump ability. So you see, it's really simple to use these mobile controls. Now let's add the third button so that we can switch to the uh, ball mode. For now, I'm using the control key. For that, I will duplicate this button, sprint using control D and let's move it. And let's call it switch mode. Next, I will change the icon of this switch button by selecting image icon. For now, it is set to this sprint. Let's use another one like this circle. Finally, we have to change the function that is called each time we press this button. So from the inspector, 
you see that we have this button state output event, which is something that is triggered each time we press the button. In such case, we're going to call a function under the UI canvas script that is attached to this UI canvas. Let's open it up again. To save a little bit of time, let's copy this function and call it virtual a switch input or change mode input. Then we use inputs and the name of the variable, which is called switch mode. If we change this to true using dot switch mode equals the boolean, I'm going to change the name as well, virtual switch state. Finally, we have to save this script and call the function. Make sure to select it from here, UI canvas controller, and it is called virtual switch input. And let's give it a try. If you don't want the joysticks, we have the second option. Let's disable this one. In this canvas, you could control the camera by dragging your finger. You have to follow the same process. First, you need to reference the inputs manager script and add the buttons that you want. I'm gonna get rid of it for now. And let's enable this. To be able to build the game, you need to install a few modules. Under installs, I have this version of Unity. We can go under add modules. I've already installed the Android build support as well as the OpenJDK, SDK and NDK. These are required to build the APK file. If you want to make a game for iOS, make sure to select the iOS build support and hit install. Then we can go to file, build settings. For now, I have this little warning. We need to go under the player settings again. They said that we need to switch to this color space. And let's get back to the build settings again and hit build. This will generate the APK file. I'm going to call it build test, then hit save and save again. And once it's done, we can take this APK file and put it on my smartphone to test it. I've already plugged the USB cable. Then let's copy it and paste it under the phone. After that, we can install it by going to the files. And here's the name, buildtest.apk. The steps are really simple. Then we can open it up. We can switch to the ball mode by hitting this button. And we can move using the joystick. For now, I can rotate the camera by dragging on the screen. Maybe we should disable the PC controls if we build this game. Or I'm gonna create another boolean to enable or disable the camera movement using public boolean. And let's call it lock camera. And under the onLook function, we can check if lock camera. In such case, we need to return. Then we can save the script and select the player holder. I'm gonna change this to true to lock the camera movement and build the game again. And now the problem is fixed. We could only move the camera using the joystick. So I think that's all for this video. I hope you like it. If you have any question or comment, make sure to write it under the comment section down below. And I will see you in the next one.